What's up comic and pop culture fans? This is James of Min Hunter Comics, and today we're gonna to talk about how you can actually make some money in this hobby. I'm gonna tell you how I make 75% of my money. And that's a real number. I'm really not making that up. The majority of my money is really made through this one avenue. And I wanted to talk about something that I'm doing that everybody can do. You don't have to be a YouTuber. The only thing it requires is a little bit of patience and a little bit of knowledge on your end. And remember, I'm doing this full time now, and I'm telling you that 75% of my income is from dollar bins. Whether it be from local comic shops, yard sales, flea markets, wherever, it is all about these dollar bins. Immediately you think, that, wait, what are you talking about? All the big cats, all the big sellers make all their money off of huge books, Hulk 181, Giant Size X-Men 1. Yeah, they do. You know what they got started with? You know how they accumulated wealth in order to afford those books and start actually selling those? The frickin' dollar bins. So many collectors in this hobby that you see at cons, maybe on YouTube, talk about making money through the big books. And I am basically here to tell you, forget that, unlearn it from your brain. It's of course useful to have if you find a whale of a book, that's obviously great, but it's these freaking dollar bins where you're gonna make your most money. I don't think it's talked about enough, and I think there's an assumption that the big boy books will get you money in this game. And I actually tend to find that some of the big boy books will disappoint you and leave you with too much investment on the table, and you're actually more likely to lose money on those books. So we are talking specifically about the art of the dollar bin hunting. You probably know that whoever put those books out there went through, they are more than likely aware of what's in there and you're not gonna find anything over like a $10 book. You're not walking away with an Iron Man 282. You're not walking away with a New Mutants Annual 2. Usually it can happen. I wanted to not even talk about the crazy examples of when I found a Booster Gold 1 or The Boys number 1. I want to talk about when I find 3 and $5 books. I have the advantage of knowing comic books. I've been doing this for so long and I watch videos. I constantly educate myself on what books are out there and what are small keys, desirable issues based on the story, cool covers, 90s newsstands that might not even be keys, but just since they're high grade and in newsstands, could be a three, five dollar book right there. What I do is I go to the local comic book shop whenever they have new comic book bins out. Pro tip, I recommend following your local comic book shops on Instagram or online so you can get some insider knowledge about when there's gonna be new bins out. Get over there. Even if you are late, even if it's been picked through, you can usually get anywhere from five all the way to 300 books to bring home with you if you got a little bit of time and some knowledge. There there have been times I brought one comic book home from a dollar bin. There have been times where I've filled up a car. I go down the long boxes that they have and I just look for books that stand out to me. So without the current knowledge or whipping out your phone and looking up great things, just go with the knowledge. What are issue number ones to look for? What looks familiar that maybe you saw a YouTube video where someone mentioned it? Those are the books that you want to grab. You can go through and pick through it before you pay at the counter later, but just grab them up, start a pile for yourself. And what you want to do is look for $5 books. You want to look for the Shadow of the Bat number one. You want to look for the Man of Steel 19. These are great books that you can sometimes often find in a dollar bin that have value much over a dollar. Because here's the deal. If you spend $100 of a short box worth of three, four, and five dollar books, you could make like five to eight hundred bucks off of those books. And this is what I do. I am out there every Wednesday, Saturday, and Sunday at flea markets, driving around looking for yard sales, looking at dollar bin books. I'm not even looking for the crazy stuff because this stuff, the three, four, and five dollar books, is the churn and burn buy for a buck, sell for five stuff that is gonna make this hobby fund itself. Yes, if you spend $150 and got an amazing deal on a book that you can sell for $200, it's great making that 50 bucks. But you know what's even better and frankly easier and more realistic is finding $5 books, getting a stack of them and selling them on your own 
you've turned $1 into four, five bucks per book that you spent an afternoon grabbing at the local comic book shop. If you're doing this at your comic book shops, yard sales, and garage sales, it is a slower burn, of course. But I'm telling you, the first time you make $600 off of a $100 purchase that you did at your local comic book shop, not even a yard sale, you'll see what I mean. And the beautiful thing is once you get that money, you can turn money into more money. Some people say, oh, I made $500 profit. Let me buy a slab. I say I made $500 profit. Let me take that $500 and continue the grind of the dollar bin hunting. At my claim sales, $5 books are the best seller. Turning and burning $5 books that you found in a dollar bin is really gonna rack up, man. On a bad day, I'd be able to make $300 off of like a $150 investment. Guess what, guys? If you turn $300 from $150, you have doubled your money. That is fantastic math. If you buy a $1,000 book for $900 and sell it for $1,000, you have not doubled your money. You did make a profit, but it's not doubling your money. And of course, you're saying, well, you know, that you're talking about three $5 books here. You'd have to sell a bunch to really see the benefit of this two, three, four times your money. Of course, that's not what's being debated. I'm saying if you stick to this grind and ignore going after the crazy stuff, the stuff that some people find unobtainable, and stick to knowing that the average collector wants to probably spend five to 20 bucks, you're gonna be golden, my friend. The hardest part probably is just gonna get yourself familiar. But there are apps, there are tools. I make YouTube videos, there's other people that make YouTube videos talking about what books to, there are to look out for. Familiarize yourself with a hobby. It's gonna be a lot easier than you think. It seems daunting at first, but believe me, you will become a walking Wikipedia for some of this stuff. You will surprise yourself with your knowledge accumulation and you will know these keys and small keys when you find them out there. I said it earlier, but don't forget, there is more than just keys, great covers, sometimes high grade newsstand 90s books that aren't even keys can have some value. Keep an eye out for those sorts of things. I almost always grab up issue number ones. People love to buy issue number ones, even if it's not a particularly valuable book. If it's a $3 valued book, cool, three bucks, I made $2 off of one buck. So many collectors in this hobby that you see at cons, maybe on YouTube, talk about making money through the big books. And I am basically here to tell you, forget that, unlearn it from your brain. It's of course useful to have if you find a whale of a book, that's obviously great, but it's these freaking dollar bins where you're gonna make your most money. And the beautiful thing about this is this is an actual doable thing. If you've got a $20 budget, you could get 20, maybe even 25 comics from a dollar bin special. And you could maybe turn that $20 into up to $100 sometimes, sometimes even $200. And the beautiful thing about dollar bins is sometimes you even find $10, $20 books in there that snuck in. I've structured my business model like this. I basically spend my time hunting at the dollar bins, at flea markets, at the comic book shops, whatever. Obviously, looking always for the bigger books and an opportunity to sell, but I am someone who pays up for keys. So when I see keys in the wild or I see people with keys, I do what I would think is the honest thing. I tell them the FMV, I tell them what I as a business can pay, and I point out that I pay typically better than most comic book shops in other places. And then they have a decision if they want to go with me. If not, cool. But the profit margin for buying a book at, let's say, 70% of its fair market value is your profit is at little 30%. It takes time to advertise those books. It takes time to show them online. It takes time getting them out there. Whereas if you just buy dollar bin books that are $5 books, you're making two, three, four, five dollars $5 for each dollar investment. So if you were to ask me, what do I like to spend my money on as a collector and a businessman, it is not gigantic keys, it is dollar bins. When I first started this channel, not even a full three years ago, I was kind of between two YouTube names. I forget it, but it was Mint Hunter Comics and the other one was like Dollar Bin Diver 69 420 Blaze It. I don't know. But I wanted to be a very dollar bin central YouTube channel. And the beauty of it is 
you can do this. We're not talking about finding insane books in the wild. We're talking about finding reasonable books in dollar bins. Anybody can do that. Some people get tripped up and they say, eh, it's like a $3 book, I don't know. And they bulk it off to the local comic book shop or whatever have you. And I don't think they should. I know that space is an issue. Sometimes they want a quick buck that they can use on a big key. And instead of turning that money into a giant size X-Men, spend a bunch of time recirculating it into the dollar bin game. If you're like me, you'll surprise yourself off of how much money you made just from bins. And you're gonna target that probably even more than going to heritage auctions and trying to get the biggest books out there. Oh, and it's fun. It's really fun. I almost forgot to say that. Sometimes you see other collectors out there, you start talking, what are they into? Then you start going into what your dorkiness is. And it's just a beautiful thing. And it supports your local businesses. Oh, it's great, man. I just, dollar bins, man. I'm telling you, that is the theme of today's video. I'm sticking with it. And yeah, sometimes you make the drive out to your local comic book shops, dollar bins, and it really is all fluff. There's not a damn thing in there. I do find that to be actually kind of rare. Usually you can find some three, four, five dollar books in there and get a little stack for yourself. I hope this video helps because I am telling you that the dollar bins are easily where I make most of my money back. 200, 300, 400, 500 percent profits. That is math anybody can enjoy and you don't have to be special to do it. I love you all. This week we are back on schedule. You can see regular videos and I'm looking forward to giving it back to you. Have a beautiful summer, everybody. Get out there and keep on hunting. Make sure to come down to Sentiment Depot Antiques and Collectibles where I'm set up with all of my comics located at 238 West Delaware Ave, Pennington, New Jersey. Open every day except for Monday and Tuesday. Enjoy 10% off from Wednesday to Friday. See you there.